Hello there, my name is Charles Wells Fan Sipa. Welcome to the presentation on differentiation of functions of complex variables. Now, what should we bring to this uh, kind of a situation? First of all, we need to bring our, all our knowledge on differentiation of functions of single variables and also our knowledge of differentiation of partial of partial differentiation of which if you need some recapping you must try to see the, the look at your notes for earlier course in mathematics special mathematics one and two now just to recap on uh, differentiation of function of variables we recall that uh, the derivative of function of single variable was defined by a limit of this nature and then if the limit of this kind of incremental quotient existed that's what we call the derivative or f prime of x which you could also denote as uh, df dx in other words we differentiate a function with respect to its independence var uh, variable and the Please call that this limit was calculated as x tending to x, and it's very important to know that uh, to keep in mind that x is always the considered different from x zero, which in this case would be a particular point. All right. Now the calculation of this derivative. Remember, we analyze this limit from the the right. Like we first we calculated the limit as um, x is tending to x zero from the right, and we also did analyze the limit as x was going to x zero from the left. Like on the real number line, to approach a point, there are only two directions we can come from. So either we come from the right, or you come from the left. So if the limit existed and was unique, then we'd say the this derivative exists, and then from there we want them to develop some methods, analytic methods of computing derivatives. Now, in this situation of complex numbers, in the complex functions, the situation can be looked at in a similar fashion but is more challenging. Now Again, considering z different from z0, we are now in a situation of, uh, the new situation here is that now, we are on a plane. Now, to analyze this limit existing, as you approach a point z0, and you must notice that the challenge here is that now, there are infinite directions you can approach Z0, which actually presents a challenge and actually makes the differentiation of complex functions more challenging. But in this case, there's some theory which has been uh, developed for computing this, then we're not going to really worry about calculating the incremental uh, in quotient part. Theoretically, if this limit ex exists, we shall say the function is uh, analytic. In other words, in the case we are able to calculate the limit uh, of this incremental quotient, the function f of z, now it's here now, the, our function is omega equals to f of z, and uh, this will calculate the limit. Uh, so if it exists, it's, it's, it's analytic. Synonym to that, you can also say the function is uh, regular or we can say the function is holomorphic. Holomorphic. Please don't be frightened by these terms. They simply mean the same thing that the function has a derivative in this case, at a particular point, z0, or here's a derivative in a certain region. 
let's say you are going to use R here and a region. In this case, we'll be looking at the domain of uh, the function f of z, which would be a subset of the complex numbers or the complex plane. Now, like I've said, that we're not going to go through via this question to get the ways of differentiating, but we're going to use already the theory which has already been developed. The theory we're talking about here in this case refers to what we call Cauchy Riemann equations. And in this case, the, these uh, equations actually are giving us some kind of a theorem or a uh, kind of a theorem or let's say a proved effect. And first of all, before we understand, we talk of Cauchy Riemann equations, we must recall that the structure of a complex function f of z is as follows is f of z is always equals to a composite function made of u of x, y function of total variables plus imaginary unit multiplied by another function of var two variables v of x, y. That is very important to focus, to know that structure. And then we mustn't also lose sight here of the fact that x is actually equals to i y, our imaginary unit, i, y. Now, the theory which has been developed is established that if, all right, if in capital letters, if, in other words, this theorem is a kind of an if-then statement, which is similar to what you use when you're doing your software engineering, let's say programming. So it says if f of z, is analytic I could have said regular or I could have said holomorphic but in this case we're going to use this term analytic in some region when I was saying in some region we mean that the function is analytic on every point of that region in some region R of the Z plane then the following is true or the following holds. So you can say then the two equations what two equations? Equations are partial derivative of u with respect to x is equal to partial derivative of v with respect to y and partial derivative of u with respect to y is equals to minus partial derivative of v with respect to x. Now, I hope you note here that if you multiply by minus, so minus 1 here, the minus sign can be shifted to this side. That is important to note. Then, these equations are satisfied. Now, as they are true, they are satisfied throughout throughout the region R.
Okay, let's go over this uh, theorem again. Theorem again. The theorem simply states that if a function f of z, which is defined on a region R, which is a subset of uh, the complex plane, if the function is analytic, then these two equations will be satisfied. Now, words, you must note that this is an end. Now, words, both equations are satisfied at the same time throughout the region R. Now, this same theorem can actually also be expressed in terms of uh, Z. Let's say if we consider that uh, Z can be written as uh, Z equals to R e to the power i theta. Now it's given in exponential form, uh, in, in exponential form, where theta is an angle in radians. So that f of x can also be expressed here as uh, f of x equals to u equals to r theta. Now it's in terms of the polar coordinates plus i v r theta. So if we do that, then we can actually then express the coach riemann equation in in a, a polar form. In this case, it will they will look like this. We would say du of du dr would be equals to one over r dv the theta and dv dr equals to 1 over r du d d theta. All what was saying here is that uh, uh, if we, give, we have a function given in polar uh, form uh, with in polar coordinates, then the coach Riemann equations can express the, this way. And then, once the coach Riemann equations are satisfied, it can also be shown that the derivative of the function f of z, that's the first derivative of f of z, can be expressed in this form as du dx plus i dv dx. So what is what this is saying that once we've seen that the coach Riemann equations are satisfied, we can simply get the derivative by adding these two derivative partial derivative in terms of x with the, the marginal uh, unit going with the, that one. This is also equals to, again, this is using the same, remember, du dx is equal to dv dy, then this would be equal to dv dy, but on the other hand, dv dx is equal to minus du dy, so to minus i du delta u delta y. You must be careful here. The notation of this derivative is partial and uh, it's not appropriate actually to say dv is delta u delta y delta v delta y. So in each case what it shows us here that the partial the derivative with respect to z can be obtained with uh, using the partial derivative either in terms of x or in terms of y but it's not that when you're using terms of y, you should always incorporate that minus sign this way. Then, or if given in polar form, then f of z prime 
will be equals to e to the power minus i theta brackets 1 over r multiplied by dv d theta minus i over r multiplied by d u delta u delta theta i hope you can see that you can simplify this further and uh, write it in sim simple as uh, e to the power i theta over r in brackets d v d theta delta v delta theta minus delta u delta theta so that's the that's the formula for calculating derivative for a function of complex variables i think i'll stop at this stage and um, in the next presentation we're going to now take examples particular examples to do this kind of differentiation thank you for listening